if you recall, we were at the Rat Fink reunion in Manti, Utah. Well, we're still at the Rat Fink reunion in Manti, Utah. I thought I would introduce you to someone that I met here. He's written a very interesting book on the hot rod. Uh, as it happens, once I uh, got talking to him, it turns out we have some mutual acquaintances and possibly even work together on a film. Need to uh, touch bases with him on that some more today. But uh, I thought we'd take a little time and talk to him about his new book. As I started doing the book, um, I realized that the story that I wanted to tell uh, was not just about drawing hot rods, but why you draw hot rods in the first place. And I have a lot of work that I did when I was a kid. I have a lot of photographs that I took at hot rod shows back in the 60s. Um, and I realized how much hot rod culture in the 1960s affected uh, affected me and what I became, which is a designer for animation, for visual effects. Uh, I've, I've been an illustrator for Rolling Stone magazine and done advertising illustration, all these sorts of things. And in many ways, it all leads back to hot rods. If you're of a certain age uh, and you grew up in the 60s and you were an adolescent, uh, uh, 11 or 12 years old in 1962, uh, you probably knew who Ed Roth was. And you knew who Dean Jeffries was, and you knew who Tommy Ivo was, and you knew who George Barris was, and Daryl Starbird, and Gene Winfield, Bill Cushenberry, all of them. You know, there was all, the, all of these customizers, there's a long list of them, and, uh, but Ed Roth was the one who was I guess the most distinctive, and he was the one that had the most appeal to to young to young guys. He was the Pied Piper with fiberglass and chrome. He built cars like nobody else, nobody else, and and that's what set him apart. Because his cars were built from fiberglass, they had a shape language and a design sensibility that no one else had. They were fun. They were exciting, they were bubble tops and amazing, amazing shapes. He was a guy that embraced uh, ideas and then they were pretty wild ideas uh, about what a car could be or what it didn't have to be. That's probably more significant than anything, what a car didn't have to be and this, this originality that he brought to this art form and it is an art form it's not just a bunch of guys with grease on their knuckles it is a uh, the the capabilities that a person has to have to build a car from the ground up are skills that are quintessential American skills uh, a, a creative extension of uh, taking machinery and making art. His Sancho Panza, his, his sergeant in arms, was a character called the Rat Fink. And the Rat Fink was this slovenly rat who had crooked teeth, bulging, bloody, bloodshot eyeballs, flies, a halo of flies uh, circling around his head, um, and a gigantic gut. And uh, and he was wonderful. And, and he was an amazing creature and he was so fun to draw that he, that every kid in America probably drew one on his binder or his history book. We weren't drawing Mickey Mouse on our binders, we were drawing Rat Fink. Rat Fink was, uh, he was a, he was an ambassador of goodwill, period. You know, uh, so in addition to Rat Fink, Ed, uh, Ed Roth, Big Daddy Roth uh, created a universe of characters uh, driving the, the most uh, amazingly drawn, flaming, uh, belching, chrome, 
hot rods that you've ever seen, usually piloted by some slobbering, uh, one-eyed cyclops, um, uh, crazy monster. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know how else to describe it, but it was just, it was a universe of pure fun. Post-World War II America created a generation of guys that were amazingly capable. Uh, they, were, they were capable of, you know, pulling the motors out of tanks and putting a new one in. They were capable of building just about anything. The industrial might of America that was harnessed to win World War II resulted in a post-war um, industrial boom that employed anybody who wanted a job. And so guys came out of the military and went right into the assembly line at GM and Ford and Westinghouse, building fleets of airliners and, and uh, converting military assembly lines into products. Uh, television sets and refrigerators and appliances and this wave of optimism that swept over America in the um, in the aftermath of World War II was extraordinary. Well that looks like that's going to be a very very fun book. I saw the galleys back there at the convention. Joyride Flat Out it's called. Some really nice looking art Photographs, photographs from back in the day, good looking hot rods, covers the entire time span really from the late 50s to present day. Really interesting, joyride flat out. Go looking for it on the web, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Also on the internet, subscribe to my YouTube channel and the Vimeo, share those links with your friends, like me on Facebook. I'm not sure how you found this particular movie on the internet, but I'm hoping you didn't find it boring. And I'll see you here again next week.